Imagine if you discovered that Jesus, Mary, and their people were all of African origin. Maybe this surprises you, because until now, the image we have of Jesus is that of a man with fair skin, long blonde hair, and blue eyes. Naturally, we thought his mother and her people were also light-skinned. This perception has been reinforced over the centuries through ancient paintings depicting Jesus as a white man. However, all of these paintings were modified to represent this image. Jesus, Mary, and their people were intentionally portrayed as contemporary Europeans. Recently, Russia revealed ancient paintings from the 10th and 15th centuries that had not been altered. What these paintings reveal and how it completely changes our perception of Jesus, Mary, and their people is what you will discover today. Before proceeding, I want to emphasize that this video is for informational purposes only and I ask that you draw your own conclusions and share them in the comments. But how did this happen? Intriguingly, cathedrals around the world have paintings similar to those found in Russian vaults, with one crucial exception. In Russian paintings, Jesus, Mary, and the people around them are depicted as black. Except for this difference, both paintings depict almost identical locations, raising questions about possible manipulation of the paintings in Europe. Paintings discovered in Russia date back to the 11th century and even earlier, indicating that they are not forgeries. This is due to the fact that, at that time, Russia was in direct contact with the Byzantine Empire. Any discrepancies in things like religious paintings would have been readily noticed. This suggests that church paintings in the Byzantine Empire also depicted Jesus, Mary, and their people as black. Before we discover why this discrepancy exists, it is important to understand the content of these paintings, known as Russian icons. These works of art make up a vast collection representing the time and life of Jesus. Father Vladimir Ivanov, in his work, Russian Icons, carried out a detailed analysis of Russian iconography, offering interpretations on the history, symbolism, and spiritual meaning of these precious pieces of art. His book provides a comprehensive overview of Russian iconography, covering a variety of aspects. Although these works depict a diversity of scenes, they all have one element in common. The representation of Jesus, Mary, individuals, and even angels as dark-skinned people. Father Ivanov explores the artistic techniques employed in the creation of Russian icons, including the use of egg tempera paint, gold leaf, and traditional methods of composition and stylization. By analyzing the role of icons in orthodox devotional practices, such as veneration, processions, and their use in both private and public worship, the book highlights the profound influence of these images on the spirituality of the faithful. Some of these paintings even depict periods before Jesus. For example, Andre Rublov's Trinity represents the biblical passage in which three angels visit the patriarch Abraham at the Oak of Mamre, as described in the book of Genesis. For Christians, this event symbolizes the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, revealing itself to Abraham. What stands out in this painting is the dark skin of all the figures represented. Another painting, of Peter and Paul, shows these fundamental characters in the spread of Christianity, especially after the crucifixion of Jesus. While in the European version they are portrayed as white men with blonde hair, in the Russian paintings kept in the vaults, they are represented as dark-skinned people. Peter, for example, is shown as an elderly man with a white beard, dressed in attire that symbolizes his position as apostle and the first pope of the Catholic Church. He often holds keys, symbolizing his authority as keeper of the keys to the kingdom of heaven, as described in the New Testament. Paul is commonly represented as a bearded man, wearing the typical clothing of a Roman citizen, showing his dual identity as Jew and Roman. He holds a book, symbolizing his role as a preacher and author of several letters in the New Testament, which had a great impact on Christian theology and doctrine. Peter and Paul are considered martyrs for the faith, with Peter being crucified upside down and Paul being beheaded. The work, The Sign, 
portrays a significant event in Christian tradition known as the sign of the Theotokos. In it, Mary, also called the Theotokos, is represented standing with her arms outstretched in prayer. Generally, she is in the center of the painting, surrounded by angels or celestial beings. Sometimes there is an image of Mary appearing within or above a church or temple. Rays of light emanate from her, representing her spiritual radiance and connection with God. The sign illustrates a miracle attributed to Mary, believed to have appeared in heaven in answer to prayer or as a symbol of divine intervention. This event, especially for Catholics, is generally associated with the idea of protection, guidance, and blessings granted by Mary. The painting serves as a visual representation of intercession for the faithful. She is not depicted as white in the painting. Another significant painting is the Theotokos of Bogolyubov, a valued representation of Mary and the Christ child in the Christian tradition. The name derives from the Bogolyubov Monastery near Vladimir, Russia, where it was originally located. This artwork holds both artistic and spiritual significance, capturing themes of divine motherhood, compassion, and grace. In the painting, Mary is represented with dark skin, demonstrating kindness and humility. Among the paintings is Miguel appearing to Joshua, which illustrates a significant event from the Old Testament. In this scene, Michael, portrayed as a dark-skinned protective warrior, appears before Joshua, who succeeded Moses as leader of the Israelites and guided them to the Promised Land. The story represented in this painting is taken from the book of Joshua, more specifically from Joshua 5 verse 13 to 15. In this excerpt, Joshua comes across a mysterious figure before him, holding a drawn sword. When Joshua approaches and questions who he is, the figure identifies himself as the commander of the Lord's army, indicating his divine authority as God's envoy. Another notable work is the Savior of Yaroslav, which shows a revered representation of Jesus Christ, known as Christ Pantocrator, with dark skin. This depiction is common in Orthodox Christian art and carries deep spiritual meaning. In the painting, Christ is depicted as the supreme ruler and judge of the universe, sitting on a divine throne. He holds a gospel book in his left hand, symbolizing his authority as a divine teacher and the incarnation of the Word of God. His facial expression is calm but authoritative, reflecting his power and compassion as humanity's savior. His eyes are represented as penetrating and omniscient, conveying his divine wisdom. Named after the city of Yaroslav, Russia, where it is located, the painting Yaroslav's Savior exemplifies Russian iconography, showcasing the region's characteristic artistic style and cultural heritage. Next, we have the famous painting titled Savior in a Golden Riza. An icon depicting Jesus Christ adorned with a golden riza is the central focus in the Orthodox tradition. A riza is a metal covering for icons, often made of gold or silver. The featured painting is Jesus Christ, depicted in Orthodox iconography with a halo around his head, symbolizing his divine nature. Notably, Jesus is depicted with dark or black skin. The elaborate golden Riza design, which surrounds the icon of Jesus, displays detailed patterns, engravings, and sometimes even gems. This represents the image of Jesus Christ, which symbolizes the divine love of God and the reverence and significance attributed to the image of Christ in Orthodox worship. Furthermore, the Riza serves as a visual representation of God's magnificence and splendor, strengthening faith in Jesus as the divine Son of God. Now, returning to the painting Theotokos of Vladimir, highly valued in the Orthodox Christian tradition, it depicts Mary, also known as the Theotokos, holding the baby Jesus in her arms. Theotokos means God-bearer or mother of God, highlighting Mary's role as mother of Jesus, who, according to the Bible, has both human and divine nature. It is important to note that both Jesus and Mary are represented with non-white skin, tending towards a black appearance. Mary conveys serenity in the painting, 
holding Jesus tenderly while supporting him with one hand and gently stroking his cheek with the other. Jesus, depicted as a small child, often extends his right hand in a gesture of blessing. One of the Russian icons kept in the vaults is the Uglich Annunciation, which offers a unique representation of angels. This painting depicts the Annunciation, a significant event in which the Archangel Gabriel informs Mary that she will conceive and give birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Both Gabriel and Maria are represented with dark skin, without fair tones, blue eyes, or blonde hair. Another notable painting is Elusa, which means tenderness or compassion in Greek. It shows a specific depiction of Mary holding baby Jesus in a close embrace, with their cheeks touching. This highlights the intimate bond between mother and child. In this painting, Jesus and Mary have dark skin, echoing the same theme found in other artworks in the collection. There is a painting called Our Lady of St. Theodore, showing Mary holding the baby Jesus. This work of art is yet another example of the representation of sacred figures with dark skin in Russian iconography, challenging conventional representations and offering a new perspective on religious history and culture. Mary, often illustrated as a small child, raises her right hand in a gesture of blessing. She is seen as a protective figure of Constantinople and is highly revered as the guardian and patron saint of the Byzantine Empire. Interestingly, both Jesus and Mary are depicted with dark skin, not white. This could lead some to believe that only Jesus and Mary were of African descent. However, these paintings suggest that those close to Jesus and Mary were also depicted as dark-skinned. For example, the painting Desi's with John the Baptist shows both of them next to Christ. They are portrayed in positions of authority and judgment, interceding with Christ on behalf of humanity. What's fascinating is that they all have extremely dark skin. Jesus' African ancestry has historical significance, placing him within a specific context, as well as his followers. For centuries, the predominant image of Jesus in Western cultures has been that of a fair-skinned man with long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair and blue eyes. However, the Bible does not describe Jesus this way. The Bible does not provide a physical description of Jesus, and evidence suggests that he likely looked quite different from this common representation. Biblical records indicate that Jesus was a Jewish man, born in Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth, Galilee, during the first century. Although the Bible mentions that Jesus began his ministry at the age of 30, it offers few details about his physical appearance, suggesting only that he was not notably handsome or flashy. In Revelation 1 and 15, it describes Jesus with characteristics that resemble dark-skinned people, such as textured hair, piercing eyes, and feet shining like bronze. But why does Russia differ in portraying Jesus and his people as dark-skinned in their religious artwork? The reason goes back to Russia's separation from the Byzantine church during the period when religious representations were being whitewashed. This separation resulted from the Mongol invasion and occupation of Russia, known as the Golden Horde, which profoundly affected the region's ties with the Byzantine Empire and the wider Christian world. Beginning in the early 11th century, the Mongols launched a series of military campaigns, resulting in the establishment of the Mongol Empire, one of the largest land empires in history. This brought them into contact with several civilizations, including Russia. Before this, Russia had strong connections with the Byzantine Empire and widely adopted its religious beliefs. In 1237, the Mongols began a devastating invasion of the Russian principalities, which were divided and unable to mount a unified defense. This invasion reached its critical point at the Battle of the River Sidi in 1238, where the Mongols emerged as victors, taking control over the region and establishing the Golden Horde as a dominant power demanding tribute from the Russian princes. The Mongol occupation redefined Russia's relations with the Byzantine Empire and the wider Christian world. Before the invasion, Russia had adopted Byzantine Christianity, considering Constantinople, the Byzantine capital, as its main spiritual reference. 
However, the Mongol invasion disrupted these connections, cutting off communication and trade routes with Byzantium and introducing administrative structures that sometimes conflicted with the authority of the Russian Orthodox Church. Before the invasion, both Russia and the Byzantine Empire are believed to have possessed similar works of religious art. However, after the invasion, while in Europe the lightning of religious depictions began, in Russia, which remained under Mongol rule for over 250 years, works of religious art continued to portray Jesus and his people as dark-skinned. This left Russia isolated in preserving these works, while the rest of Europe whitewashed their representations. The question then arises, could the paintings found in Russian vaults have darkened over time? Many Europeans believe that Jesus, his mother, and the people depicted in the paintings were actually white, stating that as the paintings age, their colors tend to darken. However, this argument is fragile. All paintings in European churches remained their original colors over time, without darkening. If aging really affected colors, all paintings would change uniformly. But that didn't happen. Furthermore, if aging caused color changes, why would only skin color be affected? Why did the other elements of the paintings remain unchanged? It is interesting to note that in Russian paintings, white elements and light colors are still visible, which suggests that if Jesus and his mother are depicted with dark skin, it was a deliberate choice based on facts. Do you still believe in the traditional representation of Jesus, his mother, and his people as white Europeans, or do you have another interpretation? Do you believe they were dark-skinned? Leave your opinion in the comments. If this video was uplifting to you, please like and share it with your friends and family. I'm sure God will bless you. Subscribe to our channel to receive upcoming content. Thank you and see you next time.